We are on knowledge seven, lesson seven, fossils. Our first word is fossil, say fossil. Fossil is the preserved imprint or body of a plant or animal that died many years ago. The next word is impression, say impression. Impression is the shape of something left on a surface due to pressure. And the last word is paleontologist, say paleontologist. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies living things from long ago by looking at fossils. Hi everyone, my name is Pam and I'm a paleontologist. Jerry the geologist is a friend of mine. He called me this morning and asked me to come in and finish teaching you about the history of the earth. He is sorry he can't be here, but all this rock talk has him itching to go see some neat rocks himself. So he is off hiking in the mountains. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies paleontology, which is the study of life that existed on Earth in the distant past. Can you say paleontologist? Paleontologists study bones to learn more about life on Earth long ago. This isn't just any bone, it's a dinosaur bone. I'll be teaching you about dinosaurs in the near future. Jerry told me that you already know about basic factors, heat, pressure, and time. You also know that sedimentary rocks such as sandstone and limestone are formed from layers of sediments that have been pressed together over time. These layers of sediment offer many clues about the history of life on Earth. The history of life on Earth is my specialty as a paleontologist. Paleontologists need to know a lot about rocks and geology in order to study living things because of something called a fossil. A fossil is the preserved body or imprint of a plant or animal that lived thousands, millions, or even billions of years ago. Most fossils, like this fossil of a seashell, show you where the body of an animal or plant died and was buried under layer after layer of sediment. Over many, many years, with more and more sediment pressing down on it, this shell became part of the stone that formed as a result of geological pressure. You are only seeing the impression or shape of it, not the actual shell. The creature itself and its shell decayed and rotted away, but its shape stayed imprinted into the rock. As you dig down into the earth, the soil and rocks are divided into layers. These layers represented different geological periods or times during which the crust and surface of the earth changed. For instance, if you find a layer of sandstone on dry land, then you know that there may have been an ocean or river over land at some point in the distant past. We can estimate how old certain fossils may be thanks to our understanding of geology and rock layers. Fossils are usually found in layers of sedimentary rocks, though they can be found in other rock formations as well. It looks like the paleontologist in this picture has found a good place for fossil hunting. He has to dig very carefully to make sure he keeps the fossils in good condition. Every fossil is part of the Earth's fossil record. The fossil record includes everything we have learned about the history of life from studying fossils. The fossil record is what paleontologists study in order to figure out what life on Earth was like many years ago. Paleontologists can determine when the animals and plants imprinted in the fossils lived based on the rock layers in which they were found. They use information from all fossils to create a timeline of life on Earth. Today, I would like to show you several different fossils from different time periods during the history of the Earth. This is a fossil of a trilobite, an animal that some scientists believe lived about 550 million years ago. Trilobites may look like insects, but they're more closely related to lobsters and crabs. Trilobites came in many varieties, from a half inch up to 28 inches in length. They had antennas, lots of legs, and a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is important because it meant that dead trilobites were easily fossilized when they became buried in the sand. The fossil record estimates that the first plants appeared on land about the same time. Back then, there was no soil on the land because soil contains dead, decayed plants. Since these were the first plants on land, no plants had yet died in order to create soil. 
The first plants did not have the same characteristics as plants today. These plants were less than half an inch tall and they had no roots, leaves, flowers, or seeds. But they were still plants nevertheless. Soon came the age of fish. Many different types of fish ruled the waters. Also during this time, plant and animal life on land began to spread rapidly. The first soils developed on land, allowing new types of plants with stems, leaves, and roots to grow. With new plants came new land creatures ready to eat those plants. Tetrapods, the first amphibians, made their way onto the beaches. An amphibian is an animal, such as a frog, that lives part of its life in water and part of its life on land. Paleontologists have found many tetrapod fossils. An artist drew this picture using a tetrapod fossil, which shows what a real tetrapod might have looked like. Do you think any of this tetrapod's body? Parts looks like it might belong to a fish? Then lush forests full of trees and plants such as ferns began to grow. As forests increased, so did the variety and sizes of animals. The first giant reptiles appeared. Of course, the one in the picture called a Demetrodon is just a model that someone made, but they base this model on fossilized Demetrodon bones found in the earth. Paleontologists call the body part sticking up on its back a sail because it looks like the sail on a boat. This creature was not a dinosaur, but it certainly looked like one, and dinosaurs were soon to follow. We will learn more about dinosaurs next time. This is as far as the fossil record will take us today. The end. You may now go ahead and click on the Google form and answer the questions about today's read aloud.